when you're preparing your piece to be soldered, in this case, I'm going to be turning this piece of wire into a ring. I want to make sure that the two ends are cut and filed really straight. If you don't have a really straight, neat join, you're not going to have a good solder join. So preparation is key. I'm going to file the edges so that they are completely flat. And you can do this up against your bench peg or with your hand up against your table. But make sure that both edges are completely flat before you form your shape and get the join aligned. And then when you have done that, you can bend your piece into a ring. Now, this looks like it's a D-shaped ring, and there is a good reason for that. Because it's slightly thick, if I have it curved at the top, you're going to have a slight indent or a gap where the two flat edges come together. So if you flatten them down, you get a nice flush join, and that will make for a good strong solder join too. So I'm about to solder that, and I'll show you what flame we use for that next. So setting up to solder, I've got my good join. I'm going to add some flux to that. In this case, I'm using liquid flux, but you can use borax or gel flux, or you can use solder paste, which is pre-mixed with flux and solder in it. Put your flux on the join area. Add your solder piece to your design. Now you can either place your solder piece on the top or underneath. And in this case, I'm going to place it underneath because the heat will pull the solder up through the join. And then the next most important thing is the flame. Now soldering is often done with a soft flame or people try to do it with a soft flame and they wonder why the soldering doesn't work. The flame that you need is a really sharp flame. So I switch the torch on. I'm going to turn the safety catch down, put the ignition on, and on this torch, I've actually got a hold button on the side. I want the flame to be as big as it possibly can be for this particular project. And on the nozzle, you'll have a little oxygen hole there. If I turn that oxygen hole, that will give you a softer flame or even a flame with a little bit of a yellow tip. But I actually want it to be as sharp as I possibly can make it. So usually that means that the oxygen hole is fully open. Bringing that flame to my piece, and it's really important that the bright blue part of the torch actually touches. Often it's fear that makes you hold the flame away, which means that the solder doesn't work or doesn't run. So heat conduction, bright blue part on the piece, bring the torch all the way around so the flame is chasing the ring, it's conducting the heat around the whole piece, and it's changing the color of the metal. It goes through different stages of color, and when you start to see a bright orange glow, there you go, take your heat away once it's flowed nice and neatly. Make sure you switch your torch off and then you can continue to do whatever it is you need to do. What I would say is don't touch that with your hands because it's going to be pretty hot. So you can either quench it in some water or put it on a steel block to let it cool before you start forming it and shaping it. 